Welcome back to CSL TV. Now, I just hope you guys are having a beautiful, blessed day. You know what I'm saying? As we get this video started off, you can help me out by subscribing to the channel. And the best thing about doing that is you'll be helping me out by doing a good deed. And it's free. Like, comment down below what made you watch CSL TV. I use that feedback to bring you, to bring you guys many different, you know what I'm saying, contents. And it's just a RRI, a review, a reaction, an informational channel. So, with that being said, let's get it. This real estate agent was showing off a house and then was brutally murdered. Lindsay Buzayek was supposed to meet two people for a property viewing in British Columbia on February 2nd. 2008, the couple said they wanted a million dollar house. However, Lindsay was murdered while showing the couple the luxury mansion. Her killer is still at large. People who knew Lindsay, who was 28, described her as popular, caring, and highly ambitious. She had been dating Jason Zayla for one year. Jason's family was wealthy and owned a real estate business. After receiving a call from the clients in January 2008, Lindsay Buzayek hesitated to meet them. The woman spoke with a foreign accent and gave Lindsay a fake name. She told Linda she and her husband were looking to buy a home with a budget of $1 million or more. She required that the property be move-in ready and about 15 minutes from the city. Since Linda was a relatively inexperienced realtor, she felt weird about the couple contacting her directly. She was puzzled by how the woman got her number since it was her personal, not work, number. The woman she spoke with said one of Lindsay's former clients gave her the number. Lindsay tried to reach out to that client on Facebook, but they were out of town. Lindsay shared her concerns with her boyfriend and father later. She said she was confused and worried. Jason encouraged Lindsay to take on the client. He told her she would receive a large commission from the sale. Jason, Lindsay's boyfriend, had an intimidating presence, so Lindsay felt more comfortable meeting the client with him there. She began looking for a property for her new clients. An affordable three-bedroom, three-bathroom property caught her eye. The appointment was set for 5.30 p.m. on Saturday, February 2, 2008. Despite her reluctance, Lindsay decided to meet them over the phone. The client said she would arrive alone. However, she came with her husband. A witness saw the couple arrive at the property and shake hands with Lindsay before entering. The woman had been described as blonde, 40, and wearing a patterned dress. He was described as 6 feet tall, Caucasian, and dark-haired. At 5.40 p.m., Jason arrived. Jason saw the couple at the front door as he drove up. Before leaving, they turned around and walked back inside. Since Jason figured they were the clients his girlfriend was meeting, he parked outside for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, Jason texted Linda. He decided to go inside when she didn't open his message. The door was locked. Immediately, Jason called 911. While speaking with the 911 operator, Jason found the patio door open and entered. He found Lindsay in the master bedroom lying on the floor. She had been stabbed several times. Her purse and wallet were still there, and there was no sign of sexual assault. Lindsay had no defensive wounds, and she was likely caught off guard by her killers. Violent criminals on Lindsay's Facebook friends list may have played a role in the murder, police suspected. However, the police have never named a suspect. Advances in DNA analysis and other technology created new leads in the case in February 2021. Since early 2020, the Federal Bureau of Investigation has worked with investigators in British Columbia. This story out of California is absolutely terrifying. This is Xavier Chavarin, a 17-year-old straight-A high school senior in Los Angeles. Last Friday, Xavier was waiting to be picked up by his mom after school near this restaurant. In surveillance video, a man walks up behind him pulling a huge knife out of his pocket and stabs Xavier several times. Xavier died in the restaurant trying to get help. Xavier's family is in disbelief. He was very happy. He would like to make other people laugh. He was always a joyful kid, you know. I'm trying to stay sane right now. Uh, so many emotions going through me. Um, hang in, stay in one piece, you know, and not fall apart. Cops say the suspect then stabbed a 33-year-old man later that night. The suspect is described as a 5'1 man with long, wavy black hair and a long beard, and he is still at large. It's really scary because now I have to like let my siblings know to like make sure you wash your bag or my friends like you can't walk anywhere alone now like can't be safe in my, our, our own neighborhood you know. The motive is unclear in both of these stabbings and cops say it was likely random and senseless. 
Buckle up because this story has everything, multiple carjackings, a 100 plus mile per hour cop chase, a wild shootout with assault weapons, and a surprising twist. And it was all captured on video. But fair warning, some of this may be hard to watch. The madness started last Friday in Chino, California, where 44-year-old Benjamin Gonzalez was seen driving recklessly after stealing this man's pickup truck at a gas station. And he said, hey brother, I need that truck. And I still kind of looked at him like, no nah, man, you're not getting my truck. And then he popped a round from his automatic rifle and that, it just sent like, it just made my heart race. Like it was so loud. After carjacking the pickup truck, he leads cops on a wild pursuit through multiple California counties, at times stopping to shoot at cops. He's shooting! He's shooting! He's got a gun! That's a gun! That's, a, that's an assault rifle! You can see shots being fired through the front and back windows while he's driving, at times going down the wrong side of the road. Look at this! Firing more shots! More shots at those units! At one point, he suddenly stops to let kids getting out of school safely cross the street, but still manages to evade cops and keeps going. Eventually, he clips a cop car trying to cut him off and then loses control of the car, slamming into a light pole. But he doesn't stop there. He gets out on foot and tries to jack another car, but runs off, eventually being tackled by a group of cops and arrested. He was placed on a gurney while people screamed. No! I love you! The suspect was shot at some point during the exchange, but he's expected to make a full recovery and now he's being held on a $1 million bail. The crazy thing? No one was killed in this wild pursuit that stretched over 50 miles. The LA police chief said this. His ongoing efforts to, con to commit gun violence through carjacking, the terror that he brought our community, was enabled because of one of these weapons of war. Shout out to Angie and John over at Notice News. Um, it's just real sad to see the type of stuff we have to deal with in this world. Oh, man. I'm just thankful for 50 miles that that dumb nonsense was going on. Nobody got hurt. And then this guy actually stopped to let those kids go by, which is something you usually don't see when it comes to these type of situations. But it's good to see the kids didn't get hurt. And then, you know, with that, that guy getting stabbed in the back, you know what I'm saying? Trying to run in the store to get help, trying to run inside to get help. That's just sad because they said this shit was random, you know? And that could have been anybody. Could have been me, you, anybody. So as always, you guys just watch your back. Be careful of where you at, your surroundings. And I'm not saying walk around paranoid. Just be a little bit more cautious because we're living in a time where a lot of people mentally isn't there.